Welcome, elevated viewers, to the second and final part of our interview with Mr. James Redfield, author of the international best-selling novel, The Celestine Prophecy, the first of what unfolded as his acclaimed Celestine series. Seeking to record the ongoing transformation of human consciousness in our world, the Celestine series also includes the sequels, The Tenth Insight, Holding the Vision, The Secret of Shambhala, In Search of the Eleventh Insight, and most recently, The Twelfth Insight, The Hour of Decision. As intriguing and adventurous as the volumes before it, The Twelfth Insight offers a new revelation at the current critical moment of human history. Mr. Redfield's writing has been seen as an important contribution to the New Age movement, a spiritual movement with dimensions in psychology, holistic living, and improvement of human consciousness. For his forward-thinking work, Mr. Redfield was awarded the prestigious Medal of the Presidency by the Italian Senate, the Humanitarian of the Year Award from the International New Thought Alliance, and the World View Award from the Wisdom Media Group. During an interview with Supreme Master Television, Mr. James Redfield further described the meaning of truth in life as it relates to his newest book, The Twelfth Insight, The Hour of Decision. What was coming to us is the experience mm -hmm. of this oneness with God. Mm -hmm. I call it a download because for me it was computer mm -hmm. terminology. Yes. But that's also how it feels. In other words, uh, at the ego level, you know, we think we're smart or we're not smart. We have all these attitudes about ourselves and other people. We're defensive uh, and protect ourselves and all those things. But what happens when we open up to a greater, uh, actually half our brain, mm -hmm. uh, and, and when it begins to fire up, we download all this wisdom that comes from a higher self and, and feels uh, as though we're guided in life mm -hmm. and we're helped in life. And what happens is as we move into allowing ourselves to be guided, we realize that, uh, especially uh, to the extent that we can ground ourselves in truth, then the world begins to open up for us. Mm -hmm. And we discover this soul's urge and we find out that we're being led into the, into the exact right place to make a big difference out there in the world. There's a term you use in the 12th Insight, waking up from secular obsessions. <laughs> Would you care to describe and comment on that? Yeah, well, we all have our addiction. There are all these built-in ways we distract ourselves from what's the real program of life, and that is to open up to a greater spiritual connection. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I, I name them in the book, uh, of course, and it's about a hundred of them, I guess. It's all the things that we distract ourselves with, from shopping to sports to uh, an obsession with, with religious doctrine itself rather than true religious experience, mm -hmm. and especially food of all kinds, all the drug addictions of every kind. It's ways that we distract ourselves. So it's the higher self that has to come in with the information about the nature of spirituality. And you have to have enough time to do that. Mm -hmm. You have to meditate, pray. You have to come back to this, this truthfulness. Our egos don't want to open up about our lives because they, the ego thinks it will get criticized or somehow be endangered. And, and so uh, our nature from the ego point of view is to don't open up, distract ourselves, go shopping when we feel bad, go get something more to eat when we feel bad, uh, when we feel insecure. Do all the things uh, that in our world society, at every level, we've learned to do. Have you found many have simply opted for the concept of a new spirituality? It's definitely becoming more lived. Mm -hmm. So it's happening outside of religious doctrine altogether in many cases. Mm -hmm. But the important thing to understand is that it's happening across all religions at the same time. So churches that prosper are those that talk about the authentic spiritual life, not just the intellectual uh, understanding in that religion or church. Mm -hmm. When we start to focus on the authentic spiritual life and how that feels, we realize it feels the same across all religions mm -hmm. because it's authentic. Mm -hmm. We're all the same. That's why what's happening is a unity consciousness. We're all souls, and the more we focus on that, 
the more we realize that all the other differences that we might have thought we had with people begin to fade away. Mr. James Redfield also elaborated on the new significance of truth and integrity as reflected in other realms such as science and technology, social life, and personal lifestyle. The discussion went on to topics such as the emerging new relationships between spiritual truth and science and spiritual truth and karma. You also mentioned that in the last few hundred years, the focus of science has been on the outer material world. Recently, more scientists are starting to investigate spiritual matters, such as the connection between quantum mechanics and our consciousness. Do you foresee that science can play a more positive role in humanity's search for spiritual truth in the future, and how? Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, science is moving in that direction. And not only just the modern physics, but uh, every part of science, nutritional science, uh, uh, the science uh, the, of the paranormal, uh, science of our mental ability. Mm -hmm. Because when we have a spiritual awakening and we download this side that is wise and has guidance and clarity, um, you know, things fire up in the brain, mm -hmm. which can be mapped with uh, brainwave uh, graphics. The scientists are seeking to go in that direction. Good scientists, devoted scientists, uh, are moving in that direction. And so there's more and more research. You talk about karma. What is your take on that? Well, I, I truly believe that we're understanding karma finally for the first time. For the first time. Now, if you look at all the polls, mm -hmm. Everybody believes in karma. I mean, it's, worldwide it's like average is 80, 89 to 95 percent of the people. If you ask them, is karma real? Uh, using the idea of what goes around comes around. The answer from everybody is yes, absolutely. Because why? They've seen it, and guess what? They've also experienced it. So here's how it works, I believe. One, the truth activates karma. So if we tell the truth, in the service of other people. In other words, we're trying to give them the best truth we know, knowing we don't know all the truth. Here's what my life's about. This is my dream. And what occurs is the karmic response is that we draw into our lives people that do exactly that. That we draw into our lives that people who reflect the way we are. Not as punishment, but to show us how harmful it is to other people to tell half-truths. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is that uh, that, that can help us recognize uh, that doesn't feel good to do what I do. And we can move toward telling the radical truth and centering in truth and following intuition again. So you see how it works. Uh, as soon as we start uh, telling the radical truth in service, we begin to draw people who arrive in our lives to help our dreams come true. And it's as simple and as difficult as that. You mentioned in the book that food is the first level of energy we allow into our consciousness. Do you think the adoption of a vegetarian or vegan diet plays a role in humanity's evolution to a higher consciousness? Absolutely. Uh, moving toward uh, alive foods. Mm -hmm. And the, the more raw, the better. Because raw foods uh, are more filled with light. You know, we have this a glorious chlorophyll that's still there, all these enzymes that come from the sun still in this plant. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe the movement is toward more green, more alive, raw foods in the diet in terms of helping us maintain this awareness mm -hmm. because it, you know, this is energy level we're talking about and the first energy as you say is food. And there are a lot of problems out there with food. So what's the solution? Prepare your own foods from nutritious, organic ingredients. 90% it'll change your life. Besides being a gifted and sensitive writer, Mr. James Redfield is also a filmmaker. He released a film version of The Celestine Prophecy in 2006. In addition, he edits and publishes the online Celestine Journal. He and his wife, Miss Sally Redfield, who is also an author of several books on intuitive living, co-founded a bi-weekly telewebcast, Global Prayer Project, that offers collective prayer and meditation. 
every two weeks we meet and uh, there's thousands of people across all religious persuasions the only prerequisite is that we believe in the one God of love that's within us what we do is that we all just connect there and then we uplift people by focusing on particular areas of crisis uh, certainly we've been focused on Japan of late we seek to uh, in oneness connect with everybody and in that oneness uh, envision that they're lifting into their own connection with with the rest of themselves which is God mm -hmm. down in, downloading their wisdom and their intuition so that they can courageously act they turn on to their own connection their own w guiding wisdom in order to go do the best thing they can to help prayer and meditation as ways of downloading from God consciousness enable the true experience of oneness. According to Mr. James Redfield, uh, the whole program for life, the whole purpose for history from the very beginning to right now has been to come to a unified understanding of how to live the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. One that's simple, one that's doable, one that can, we can prove to ourselves. Uh, that's the phase of uh, of growth that we're enter entering right now, in my view. That's the 12th instance. Thank you, Mr. James Redfield, for all the fascinating spiritual insights you have shared through your valuable books and this interview. We join you in looking forward to a time that all humans reconnect with God and live in truth, wisdom, and harmony. The book, The 12th Insight, The Hour of Decision by James Redfield, is available at www.the12thinsight.com and www.amazon.com. Gracious viewers, it was a pleasure to have you with us. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for words of wisdom next, right after Noteworthy News. May heaven's light brighten your life. For more details, please visit www.the12thinsight.com supreme master tv.com forward slash ee -E.